Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about MX Linux. Now I'm going to attempt an install of it here in a virtual machine in just a moment. So, But first, I would like to ask this question. Why is MX Linux so popular? So if we go to distrowatch.com, we'll see number one rank here is at MX Linux. And it's not even really close. It's by a thousand points or whatever these things are. And it's been that way for months and months, maybe even years. <laughs> I don't even know. It's been a long time. Every time I come here, MX Linux is the number one. It's for the last six months, it's, at least it's been at the top. My question is why? So what? first of all, what is MX Linux? MX Linux is a Debian-based distro. Let's see how they actually describe it. MX Linux, a desktop-oriented Linux distribution based on Debian's stable branch. So this is going to be Debian Buster, I think? I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not that as familiar with Debian as I probably should be. It is a cooperative venture between Antix. It uses XFC as a desktop, as a default desktop, as a midway operating system designed to combine an elegant and efficient desktop with simple configuration, high stability, and solid performance, and medium-sized footprint. What makes it special? Why is it number one? So we're going to install it today to find out. So let's go over here to the my virtual machine and see if we can make this thing here full screen, which we can we can do. So this is this is uh, MX Linux. This is the KDE version. So they do have a KDE version, which is one that I chose um, because KDE is awesome. Let's go ahead and um, user demo. Password demo, okay. I believe this is going to be the install close installer. All right, let's let's install this. Ooh, oh, this is a custom installer. How nice! Uh, I have no clue what I'm doing. Let's see here. That means we're going to, have to read the instructions. Um, MX is an independent Linux distribution based on Debian Stable. MX Linux uses some components from. MEPIS, which I don't know what it is, Linux, which are released under the Apache free license. Um, enjoy using MX Linux. Change keyboard settings, those look perfectly fine. Um, let's see, modify partitions, run partition tool. Okay, so this is just the KDE partition manager, which, believe it or not, I've never actually used the KDE partition manager before, it's always departed. Uh, even even when on the KDE distributions that I've used before, it's always been GT parted. So let's go ahead and create a uh, new partition table. We'll do MS DOS, I believe, is the one that we want. Um, apply. Okay, that succeeded. Partition new. We're just going to do a, the whole thing here. Um, there's nowhere here to mark it as root, though. Edit mount point. Maybe I should have used the XFC version, because then I would be able to use Gparted. Okay. Does she want to shape changes made? Made? Yes, sure. Um. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and give it a try. It's probably not going to succeed. But we're going to give it a try. Okay. Auto install using the full disk. No, nope, don't need to do that. Do next. Okay. And so it's going to partition it. Install Grub on Linux using for Linux and Windows. Yep, that'll work. It does allow you to click. I wonder if. Oh, cool. So you can keep going while that's working. That is a neat installer. That's kind of similar to how the Ubiquity installer works, if I remember right, because while you're setting up your user and stuff, it's actually already installing the system after you've get, after it's received all the information that it needs to receive. Um, so we'll, we'll keep the computer name as MX. We're going to 
delete that domain because we do not need a domain name or the we can keep the work group the same oh it requires a domain name okay um we'll just we'll just leave a example.com there then okay um yep that's fine detroit by the way, can we just pause and say this is a way better system of choosing your time zone than that stupid idiotic map that every other distribution uses? <laughs> I think I talked about this in one of my other distro reviews, but that map is stupid. This is 10 times superior. This is If there's no other reason why MX Linux is number one on the list, that could be the reason why. Or it even allows you to choose the format of the time. Wow. Okay. I'm going to leave the serv service system service settings just the way they are. There's no sense in mixing that up. Okay, let's see here. All right. We don't need to show passwords. Save live desktop changes. Oh, that's neat. Cool. So you could actually go through and customize everything you wanted. To. I wonder how much of that would actually work. Um, I'm not going to go through and find out, but it would be cool if you could go through and customize KDE all you want while this thing's installing and then just boot up. My bet is more that it is just going to change, save your, like, your Wi-Fi password or something. The username cannot contain special characters. Oh, it's because I actually changed, used my full name instead of just my username. Okay. It'd be good if I actually read the uh, instructions. There we go. And now we're just waiting for it to finish. This is a really nice little installer. It's not pretty, uh, but it's really nice. I've really enjoyed that, actually. We'll have to see what it, what all it installs. Um... Automatically reboot your system when the installer is closed. I do not want to do that. I want to finish this and then I want to shut it down because that way I can remove the installation media from the, the virtual machine. Uh, shut down. Here we go. And you should that should close here any moment now. Yeah, we're just going to do this. Close. Car off the machine. And do this. Settings, storage, it is empty already, okay, good. Sometimes it, do, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it leaves it in there, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why, okay. And we'll make this full screen again. All right, here we go. See if it see if it boots. So far, not explicitly ex happy with the boot time, but it's a virtual machine, so who knows what it actually is? Oh, here we go, and it's full screen. Good. Oops. You can always tell how oh, that that was really quick. Yeah, very good. You want know what? That's that was really good. I mean, the the boot up time between you know boot up and getting into SDDM was you know a little slower than what I was expecting, but I'm assuming that's virtual machine problems. But between the login and getting the KDE it was really I mean just lickety split, lickety split. All right, so we got frequently asked questions, user manuals, wiki tools, tweak. I don't know what this is. doesn't actually oh, there we go interesting okay cool um, this is not default from KDE this is something that MX Linux actually has enable single click show windows I'm assuming that single click means yeah that's good that's the way it should be anybody who thinks that double clicking in KDE is the way to open files is just wrong <laughs> um, system icon tries make this smaller and apply That actually ended up getting bigger. I don't know. It doesn't matter. 
Um, enable kernel sandbox. Enable mounting of internal hard drives by non-root users. I'll leave that alone. We'll close. Okay, cool. Um, forums, videos, contribute. This is a nice little startup thing. And thank you, MX Linux, for not checking this show dialog on startup by auto automatically. Every other distribution checks that automatically, and you have to uncheck it. This is the way it should be. That's really cool. All right. Let's go through and see what they have installed. So education, LibreOffice is installed. A few few of the regular, you know, Linux games, the uh, Mahjong and Mines and Sudoku graphics. Let's see, Digicam, which is, I think is going to be for your, like, webcam. I'm not actually sure what that is. GIMP is installed. G-Scan G uh, PDF is installed. Gwenview is the image viewer. Uh, Ocular is also an image viewer. Simple scan for scanning. Uh, Firefox, KPPP, which is a, a, obviously going to be a KDE-based um, thing. K Thunderbird and KTorrent. Multimedia. So VLC is here. Clementine is here. Uh, so we get also Mixer and P Pulse Audio. Those are things for controlling the volume and stuff. Um, MX Tools. Let's see here. So this is just going to be mostly just setting stuff. MX Cleanup. I wonder what MX Cleanup is. I'm going to find out. Authentication user. This is probably going to be to like clear cache. So this is basically like a... I wonder if this is even kind of forked off from Bleach Bit. That's cool. Interesting. Okay. Um, you have to clean caches and stuff. Empty the trash. And you can... Oh, you can... And you can schedule it? That is amazing. I love it. I'm using, <laughs> if MX Linux was based on Arch and had the AUR, oh man, I'd be switching. <laughs> just for this one feature, that's awesome. I wonder if you can download this just like from a Git or something and just use it. I'm going to I'm gonna have to find out because that's cool. I get excited about the weirdest things, people. <laughs> I just do. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Codex installer, which is going to be to install like MP3 Codex and stuff. Uh, boot options. I don't know what this is. Can you like choose the the? Okay, so just boot. So you can change the menu timeout for the the for Grub. Uh, you can change the. That's that's good. That's awesome. This reminds me a lot of the Arco Linux tweak tool, only that's kind of all in one. This is all kind of separated. Uh, but man, that's cool. That's good. What else? I, I'm so far. I'm very impressed. Um, let's see here. Repo manager is probably to ch choose like which uh, maybe mirrors you're using. I'm not sure. Because Debbie and I believe calls their mirrors repos. Right, I'm not actually sure. I've never actually used Debian proper before. Uh, I think I tried to install it one time. The MX Tools. So this is where they're all together. Okay. USB Live Maker. So that's so you don't have to use a uh, like Etcher or something. Cleanup. Uh, let's see. Bash Config. It's a GUI ver way to manage your Bash aliases. What? <laughs> I, I mean, it's cool, but as a Linux user, I don't really need that. I can just, I mean, I can just go into, you know, a, a terminal and type in vim bash, bash rc. And that's easy enough. Um, yeah, I don't need to just, just close. I don't need you to ask my permission. It's cool. I'm just like I said. I'm not sure that it's necessary. It's uh, it's like you can change prompt. Ooh, fancy prompt. What does that mean? I wonder what that means. Um, I'm just do fancy, fancy. Apply. Control Alt T. What does that look like? That's your fancy prompt. What? Uh, what else you got? Um, let me just see what wide looks like. We'll close this. It's basically the same. It's cool, I suppose. Um, I don't usually use Bash. I use ZSH. I wonder if they have a way to change the the to ZSH easily. 
um, NVIDIA driver installer, which I don't need to get into. That's you know just normal stuff. Date and time, Conky, select sound, brightness, citrus tray, tweak. Is going to be that one to choose where the placement of the panel is. Cool. Wonder what's under other. Other. Oh, we already looked at this. Okay. Cool. All right. What else? Welcome, system keyboard, locales, GPG key fixer, which is, oh, that's pretty cool, because you have a lot of problems. On Arch Linux, every once in a while, you'll have problems with GPGs, and so apparently you have that same problem on Debian. Um, okay, so I'm really very impressed with the MX Tools thing. That, that, that reminds me a lot of Arco Tweak Tool, only you can't go through it and install other desktop environments with it. That's where this falls down, <laughs> but it's it's cool though. Um, yeah, I'm very 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 impressed with that. All right, so we went through MX Tools. Office is just LibreOffice uh, with a couple PDF things. It actually does have two PDF things installed, which because we had one up here uh, under graphics. You have one must be an O like a uh, uh, like a to. What is what is it called? OCC, o, OSC something? I don't know. Um, I, you can tell I don't use PDFs. I mean, <laughs> come on, man. Who use PD, p uses PDFs unless you're working in an office, I guess. Um, system, these are just regular system tools. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and look at the... Um, so they don't actually have... So here we go, system tool. I would like to see what themes they have installed. So let's see here. Workspace theme. They have their own custom theme, which this just looks like Breeze theme to me. The dark one always looked better to me. The desktop theme, yeah, just the normal stuff. Nothing fancy. I guess you don't really need anything fancy. Um, on that, this is just regular stock KDE. Wonder, do we have like an? Uh, never remember where they move the about stuff. About system. So this is using KDE Plasma version 5.14. Ooh, that's behind. But it's good to remember, this is Debian, and Debian always uses the most stable stable stuff. So but I can't remember. I don't think 5.14 is the last LTS on of KDE. I might be wrong on that. It's using the KDE frameworks versions. It doesn't have the apps version here, but I'm guessing the the apps version is also significantly behind. Um. But again, I want to say that that's not a big deal. When you're using Debian, your main goal here is always going to be stability. So you want something that's always going to work, even if you're way far behind. This is not a rolling release like Arch, where you get everything brand new. Now, they do have repositories where you can go through and install the newer stuff. Uh, the I, I think it's called like Backports or something. Um, but for the most part, what you want is, you know, for just to work all the time. Nothing's ever gonna uh, ever gonna you know stop it from working. Um, overall, like man, is that really cool? Now, I, I don't run games or whatever in a virtual machine, so I'm not gonna give that. If if you're looking for that experience, you'll have to look on somebody else's channel. And I don't do a very good job with gaming with 128 megabytes of video RAM, which is all VirtualBox can do unless you do uh, the whole. GPU pass through thing, and I don't have an actual second graphics card in order to do that. So, um, for the most part, I just go through the installation process, which was really good in this case. I mean, I highly enjoy that custom installer. Uh, the MX Tools thing is just phenomenal. So, to go back to the question I asked at the beginning, why is MX Linux so popular? Now, I haven't used this for very long, so I can't proclaim that's the most stable thing ever, but I know from you know, some friends and stuff that are big Debian users. Debian is probably the most stable Linux distribution you can use. Uh, and this is based on Debian. So um, the question I would have is why wouldn't you just use Debian? And the answer to that question is obviously the installer for me is way better. I've, I vaguely remember trying to install Debian like two years ago or something. And the, the installer is just not as good as this, if I remember right. Second, 
they've done a really good job of making this a polished experience. This is probably one of my favorite KDE, uh, you know, out of the box experiences that I've had in a virtual machine. It just works. The Manjaro one and the Endeavor OS one are not the same. They're very laggy. <laughs> I mean, you, they're that's not the problem with those distros. They just aren't tooled or whatever to work in a virtual machine very well. So, very impressed. I mean, so why is Man why is MX Linux so popular? Because it seems to be pretty damn good. If like I said earlier, if this used um, if this used Arch instead of Debian, <laughs> I mean, I, my heart would just you know die <laughs> if I moved away from the AUR. But man, is this te tempting! If my, if I ever have to go through and uh, distro hop. MX Linux might be the one that I choose because it was really good. Anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, I really do appreciate everyone who subscribes to the channel, so make sure you subscribe. I publish videos seven days a week. Uh, one of those is usually a podcast, so make sure to check out the Linux cast. You can subscribe and all that kind of stuff uh, and follow us on Twitter and all that. We do really do appreciate that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.